All right, I think we are live right now. Can uh, okay? Can someone just quickly type in if you are seeing us, hearing us? No, no one. Well, I think it's a bit. I think we should be live and. It, uh, I get 32 uh, uh, attendees, 32, hang on a second. Okay. Thanks, Tess. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's roll. So hi and welcome everyone to this live webinar. My name is Nico Leppanen, and I'm the founder of the Unlimited 2015 Conference. I'm the host for these free, free conference webinars that we are doing with the speakers of the upcoming conference. And today I'm joined by a, a, someone who's really special, for me at least, a man who has had a huge influence in my own life over the past year. And that man goes by the name Jamie Smart. And as you probably know, Jamie is the author of two best selling books uh, Clarity, Clear Mind, Better Performance, Bigger Results, and The Little Book of Clarity. And he is also an internationally renowned trainer, coach, and speaker. Uh, he has done several media appearances. And yeah, and one last thing, which is that uh, one of his latest projects, which is called Work Clarity, is something really cool because it aims at eradicating chronic psychological suffering globally by 2030. So without further ado, welcome, Jamie. Hey, Nico, it's great to be here with you. Yeah, great to have you here. Um, before we dive into a conversation about Clary, I was thinking we could, or oh, I could say a few things about how we got to know each other. Um, I first heard about you about like 18 months ago in the spring of 2014, when I came across your book, Clary. And then sort of two months after that, we met for the first time in Oslo, uh, where I traveled to attend one of your workshops. Uh, that you were doing there with uh, Morten Hage. And, all, and after the workshop, it was really, uh, I don't know, life changing for me in many ways. Now that I look back, uh, after the workshop, I signed up on your um, Clarity Practitioner program. And over the course of, of the past year, I, I met you several times in London during the live events. And I think we're, we got to know each other pretty well. Uh, over the year and um, what I've really come to admire in you is is the level of mastery you are at when it comes to providing people with um, like opportunities for experiencing real transformations in their lives mm -hmm. and th there are like the way I see it there are two key things um, that you need to kind of combine when it comes to experiencing these kind of transformations. And the first one is providing the right conversation or the right message, something that points to something, a deeper truth about us as human beings. And, and when it comes to this paradigm that you, know, you talk about and, and what we are exploring and what the, the unlimited conference centers around, you know, um, that, conversation is all about pointing people towards a better understanding of of how life works. Uh, I need a, another way to say that is to bring people into alignment with, with reality. reality. Mm. So that's the first thing, the first key that I think you are just like really, really good at is to bring in the conversation and, and, and pointing to this too. And the other part is um, creating the right kind of space in which people can experience this kind of like life chasing, life changing insights. Mm. And uh, 
this, it's kind of like the space where people can just relax and and they feel safe while just being themselves and and it seems like that when you're in that kind of space you kind of drop out of your habitual thinking and then when you're out of your habitual thinking you know you're you're uh wired for insight <laughs> i guess yeah. you could say and and it kind of like on the latter point before you talk about clarity i would like because i know you kind of have some some uh suggestions for people uh, when it comes to like listening to you so if you could kind of like say how people should approach you know this 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 webinar and kind of like the conversation well you know I, it's all i'd say is just to enjoy the conversation and, and it'll sound kind of strange because it's almost like uh it's funny uh nico i was doing a talk to a, a group last week and these these folks are very very analytical and in you know very detail oriented and uh uh trying to figure it out and that sort of thing and I asked them a question and I said, when do you get your best ideas? And I've asked that question to many, many different groups of people. And they all said the things I always hear, which are, well, get my best ideas when I'm out walking or when I'm in the shower or when I'm just about to drop off to sleep or when I'm, you know, just sitting and relaxing or listening to music or looking out the window. None of them got their best ideas when they were thinking hard about something. And so I'd love it if on this call, you know, you, as you listen to what Nico and I are talking about, I'd love it if you could have some of your best ideas. And so I know that if you're going to have your best ideas, you're not going to have those while you're thinking hard about stuff. So your best shot, I'd say, at uh, having, having the insights step more fully into your consciousness that are already there for you is just to kick back and enjoy the conversation and just see where it goes just to take it easy and enjoy yourself you know we're going to be together for the next hour uh just kick back and enjoy yourself that, that would be my uh my suggestion yeah i think from an experience i can tell that you know sometimes i'm i'm listening to you and and I'm in that space. I'm kind of just like I don't know, just like listening, letting let it come in, and 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 not trying to figure it out. And then on other times, you know, I'm 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 really <laughs> doing the opposite, going like, okay, what is he? What is he saying here? What's like? I don't get it. I don't get it. Da da da. Like going and and, and the funny thing is that. You know, you, you feel the difference. I mean, yeah, that's the point. You you feel the difference, um, and so so if you're feeling kind of relaxed and just enjoying it, you are there. And if not, well, yeah, actually, yeah, that that, that would be a good question. Like, what 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 if people are kind of like not able to relax or or being well. Afraid? That's a good thing. You're recording this, so if they're not able to relax, <laughs> just pull out and listen to it another time. It's the the thing is, it's like all it's like all these things. That, and in a way, it's a great metaphor for clarity, because the central message of clarity is that when you've got nothing on your mind, you're free to give your best, whether that's your best sporting performance or your best talk or you know, your uh, best listening or your best connection. And so that what we, what we haven't been taught is that our mind's a self-correcting system. So we're very used to our body being a self-correcting system. You know, we, we get a cut or a scratch or a bruise and we trust that it'll heal itself. We trust that our body will digest our lunch. We trust that our body will, you know, tell us when it's time to go for a pee and all that sort of stuff. And we really, we really have a lot of faith in that, you know, just a lot of trust in that. We've, we've grown to rely on the fact that the body is a self-correcting mechanism, that it's got, 
its own intelligence and we're not getting in there trying to run our body we we know better than that we know that when we leave our body to its own devices it does very very well but what we haven't been taught what we haven't necessarily realized is that that same intelligence that shows up in the wisdom of the body is also resident in the mind that our minds are also self-correcting and you know uh, that all that your mind needs in order to self-correct is an absence of interference so so if you leave it alone now that can be the unfortunately the times when I find it most difficult to leave it alone are the times when I most need to leave it alone and so the thing that I find so powerful about this understanding is well let, let's start from kind of basics the 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 first thing I'm gonna suggest is that we are built for reality we've evolved over hundreds of thousands of generations to thrive in this world called reality we we're built to thrive in reality we do great in reality where and if you want an example of people who are thriving in reality look at two-year-olds and three-year-olds they spend most of their time in reality and when they're not in reality they're having a great time there too a lot of the time and they quickly self-correct uh, and the only thing that ever keeps us from reality is a misunderstanding about where our experience is coming from and that's the second thing I wanted to say you know so we're built to thrive we've evolved to thrive and to do brilliantly well and our minds only work one way and that's inside out our perceptions work inside out and sometimes we lose sight of that and when we lose sight of that then our self-correcting system goes to work to bring us back to reality and the moment we fall out of our habitual thinking and back into reality back into the moment we discover that we have what it what's necessary for the job at hand now some people call that wisdom and in my as I see it wisdom is just another word for the right thought finding you when you're present and in the moment just like when you're walking down the street or or uh, uh, you know playing a video game or uh, you know driving a car or whatever you're doing you deliver your best results when you're not really thinking about it when you're just allowing the activity to unfold and as soon as you start thinking about it well then there's something in the way and it's not that there's anything wrong with thinking but it's about realizing that actually we've evolved for reality and so when we've got a clear head we get the thoughts we need when we need them and when we got a lot on our mind uh, then we we have difficulty finding our way back to the thoughts we need when we need them but here's the interesting thing is why is it that we get a lot on our mind and the reason we get a lot on our mind is because we get tricked into believing our feelings are coming from somewhere other than thought in the moment or another way of saying that would be we get tricked into believing that it doesn't work inside out and that's when things go off base a little bit yeah <laughs> i think it, it, it's it's interesting how like i've been learning about this for I don't know, 50 months now, something like that. And and it's so kind of like slippery, <laughs> the sort of line between seeing it, seeing it clearly, and then losing sight of it. And especially in the beginning, it was like, okay, I can tell you about my my experience at, at the workshop in Oslo. Because that was sort of so at the end of the first day, I went I went back to my hotel room. And I, I was I was experiencing something that I a new kind of feeling, a new kind of experience, where it was just like it was so quiet in my mind. 
and, and it was amazing. And, I, and, 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 and then I, I was like, I had the, the only, more or less the only thought that was in my mind was, okay, I have it. I got it. Yes, I've, I've, I don't know, learned the clarity thing that Jamie's talking about. And, and I went to bed and I had a really good sleep. I woke up in the morning, it was still there. And then um, I went to breakfast and then there's like something, I don't remember what it was, there's something that I wanted and they didn't have it or something like that. And all of a sudden it was like, boom. Like it started with that, whatever thing it was. And then I went like, oh, I lost it. Okay, I lost it. Oh no. And then when I went back to, back to the second day, back to, back to the workshop, uh, it was kind of like, I was, I was trying really hard to get back there, get back to the feeling I had the day before and, and the night before. And, and for the first, I don't know, maybe up, up until the lunch break, sort of midway through the day, I, I was, I wasn't feeling it. I was so, I was just feeling increasingly anxious about it uh because i wasn't there i thought i lost it and and it's gone and da 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 and and then uh in the afternoon it, it just i kind of gave up in a way i was like whatever i maybe maybe i maybe i didn't get it or or no it doesn't matter really and then i was back there yeah <laughs> back there yeah and and, and that's kind of like um how it's been for me, when I've been learning about this, is being there, losing sight, being there, losing sight. And of course, then when you're not seeing it, you go, okay, what do I need to do something or remind myself that, oh, I'm, I'm just, this is just my thinking that I'm feeling. But, but it, that really helps. <laughs> I don't know if, if um, so it kind of like, is there anything people can do in order to experience more clarity. Well, yeah, and let me backtrack a little bit because I loved, loved, loved where you started what you said when you said you, uh, after that first day in Oslo, you got back to your hotel room and you were like so quiet and you thought, oh, I've got it. And you are correct. That's the first thing I'll tell you is that you have this already. You already have this within you because, you know, when I was first learning about this, I had some insights. And the first insight I had was that, you know, every, I was like, oh, everything you've been looking for outside yourself, you're going to find it within you. All, all those, like I'd been looking outside myself for a feeling of successfulness and well being and uh, love and all these different things security and I suddenly realized oh they're already there inside you you already have them and that's what you realized that's what you realized that first night in Oslo you already have them just like you already have knees or you already have fingers now that doesn't mean you're always looking at them like I don't walk around like that just to make sure I've still got my hand because <laughs> that would be really awkward. <laughs> um, but I know that it's there whether I can see it or not because I've had enough experience of it that I know I can count on it. Well, what we're pointing to, that source of clarity and peace and well-being and inner security, Part of the process, if you like, of learning about this is sort of, sort of waking up to the fact that you already have it. It's not something you need to get. You know, uh, one of the you and I have been kicking around subjects for uh, what my talk is going to be when I come to Helsinki. And one of the subjects we've talked about as a possibility is the search is over. And in a way, that's what, that's what 
I think you experience, you experience the realization that you have what you've been looking for until now. And that's what I'll say to you, you know, to everyone listening to this, you know, you already have what you've been looking for until now. And due to an innocent misunderstanding, we've been conditioned to lose sight of it. But as you start to learn about how it works and start to get a feel for that sense of well-being that's already there within you and how reliable it actually is you're gonna relax and you're gonna see that you can rely on it and so you don't have to search anymore and you will still sometimes search because you'll lose sight of it and you'll be like like I sometimes I'm like looking around for my glasses where are my glasses oh yeah they're, they're there well this is like that you've you've all you've you know the second big insight I had was the fact that a person is even conscious, the fact that you can even see or hear or feel means you already have this source of peace and clarity within you. So that really did something for me, Nico, because when I work with clients, I know they've got this. It's not that I think they've got it. I know you've got it. I know you've got it. So. I'm, I'm not stressed about, oh, what if they don't have it? I know you've got it. So I can relax too. I, I can, you know, it makes my job quite a bit easier. And then what happens when people come and join me, like in the workshop you came to, is you start to pick up on that certainty. You know, when people come and join us in Helsinki, that's one of the things that they'll get from every single presenter is you'll pick up on the certainty that we have that you already have this that it's there within you and that doesn't mean that you've been feeling it that doesn't mean you've been experiencing it until now but it's going to really do something for you to hear from people who absolutely know that you have this within you and you'll pick up on that feeling of certainty and it'll do something for you. So you asked if there's anything you can do uh, to experience this. And the, the interesting thing is, the thing that I've found that you can do is first of all, make it a priority to get a deeper understanding of it. So just to give you an idea, when I saw that this, you know, this is the, the future of psychology, that this is principles, this is how it really works, it really, like, it got my attention because up till then I'd been working, you know, as a skilled change worker, I'd been doing change work and coaching and stuff with and training for many years. And so I already had a facility with the processes of change. But when I saw this, I was like, oh, this is a, a change of direction this is principles and that means something and so right away I was like oh you have to make this a priority you have to invest your time and your energy and your money in deepening your understanding of this because this is how it already works and so that's the my number one suggestion if this is you know ringing a bell for you as you're listening to Nico and I talking if this is if this is uh, providing a glimpse, uh, providing you a glimpse of something which you may have always suspected or maybe you've never suspected. Uh, I want to tell you, you have very, very good reason to be hopeful because this is how it already works. This is, this is what's been creating your experience every day of your life. This, this set of principles that we're pointing to. This is, uh, and like, and this is this is kind of wild, actually. Every single beautiful feeling you've ever experienced, every feeling of joy, every feeling of comfort, of peace, of security, of well-being, any time you've ever felt just that sense of ease and comfort in your own skin, a hundred percent of that feeling came from within you. 
none of it came from outside of you none of it came from your circumstances or your bank balance or your environment or the other people around you it all came from deep within your consciousness same for all the nasty stuff too any unpleasant experience that came from deep within your consciousness as well that's how powerful you are you have it all within you so you really can relax the search is over it's you already have it I mean you can keep searching if you want to but you already have it it's already there within you and so I see that as my job Nico is to help create the context help create a space help create the conversation where this power that's already there within every human being can step more fully into your conscious awareness and the moment it starts to step more fully into your conscious awareness your life starts to transform in, in beautiful ways your relationships transform your well-being your comfort in your own skin your results your your uh, sense of direction your connection with other people it all starts to transform just by starting to get a glimpse of how it already works. That's one of the reasons I'm really excited about coming to Helsinki, you know? It was going to be yeah. fantastic. Yeah, and um, I think what is really great about you coming you coming to Helsinki and, and the other speakers coming to Helsinki is that it's gonna be just like all about like every every like you mentioned like everyone has a every one of you has a deep understanding of this understanding this paradigm that we are pointing to and also that you're gonna all of you have your own way of um, talking about it using different words um, like if, if any of you have watched the previous webinars we did with uh, um, Morten, Morten and Eric and then with Chantal Burns last time, you know, they used different ways, but they were pointing to this exact same thing. So it may be that, um, you know, you, you come to her and you're listening to one person, you're kind of like, it's, it's not maybe resonated with you. And then another person shows up, points to the exact same thing, from different perspective and all of a sudden it hits home and 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 uh so that, that's what i'm really looking forward to yeah me too yeah 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 um so 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 christian asked the question um given that our experience of life comes from within how is it that we can have an experience of and interact with and relate to people and stuff outside of us i think that's a really good good question oh, well i mean a metaphor for this would be like at the moment i'm looking at nico on the screen of my computer and nico's looking at me on the screen of his computer so my a hundred percent of my experience of nico is made of pixels and 100 of nico's experience of me is made of pixels and same for you guys who are watching us but even though it's made of pixels, we can still interact. That's how good the bandwidth is and the, the image quality and that sort of thing. Well, our, our perceptual properties, the principle of thought that's creating our experience is, is like the best pixelation in the world. It's truly extraordinary. And by the way, this, this may sound kind of way out, but the fact that something like this is going on was discovered like in the 1850s by Helmholtz it was neurology realized oh we're not walking around in our external circumstances we're walking around in an internally generated experience now I don't know about you guys but if 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 I if the you know our, our, um, our, our set, we've evolved to survive and thrive so if if that ability to create a perceptual reality is going to be useful to help us survive and thrive then it will also include other people and objects in our 
awareness so we don't bump into telephone poles and things like that. So it's very practical. It's a, it's a gift to help us navigate in this world, to navigate the world of reality. So we're not talking about what to do with it. It's about here's how it works. Here's how our experience is created moment to moment. And uh, yeah, it's very, very practical. It's very practical. It's very down to earth. It's, it, we've evolved to, to navigate this world of reality exquisitely. And this power of thought and the power of consciousness that gives us an experience of what thought's creating moment to moment and the intelligent energy of mind that powers the whole thing. Well, they're, they're there to help us live and thrive in this world of reality, in this material world. It's a very cool place to hang out in my experience. So yeah, it's uh, th Christian, that's how we have experience of other people through our own thinking, moment to moment. It's a thought generated perceptual reality that's being created. I, there are other people around. Don't get me wrong. I'm I'm going out with, for coffee with my buddy later, and he definitely exists. But a hundred percent of my experience of him will be being created from within these from these principles that we're talking about. Okay. Uh, so. Alexi, my man Alexi, there's a nice question here as well. Hey, Jamie, a few years ago, Graham Hancock held a dead X talk about the war on consciousness. In this dead talk, he argued that today's society, media and science is boosting this materialistic world and we have lost our touch to spiritualism. Spiritualism. Uh, what's your take on this? What does spiritualism mean to you? Well, I think... Uh, I. I draw first thing I draw a distinction between spiritual uh, spiritual spiritualism and spirituality. I think spiritualism is a religion actually. Spirituality is just that human sense of the 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 spiritual nature of life. And uh, to me, you know, spirituality is is uh, one of the most important aspects of my life because it's uh, because it my my uh, looking in that direction and to me spiritual is another word for beyond what we can beyond what's represented in our senses given that our sensory experience or what we experience of you know visuals and smells and tastes that's being generated from within us so to me, spiritual means what's generating that. But in reality, the whole thing is spiritual. The whole thing is spiritual. It's all one energy. We're all, you know, the physicists will tell you that, that life is all one energy. One of my favorite talks, actually, is it's an hour-long video by a guy called uh, Lawrence Krauss. It's called a, uh, a Universe from Nothing. And he explains how if you start with nothing, because of how quantum physics works, something's going to emerge from it. Now, I'm not going to try and uh, boil down what he says. He's a, he's a cosmologist and really understands the mathematics of quantum physics. So go watch the talk if you like. Now, Lawrence Krauss is an atheist. I watch his one-hour lecture on a universe from nothing, and it's one of the most beautiful descriptions of what I think of as spirituality I've ever seen. So to me, another word for spirituality is the energetic basis to all of life that physicists are talking about when they're talking about quantum physics. Um, but, you know, Alexi, if you're interested in that, go watch Lawrence Krauss's TED Talk and see what you think. What he says is, if you start with nothing, something's going to spring from it. And to me, that's that's a, a beautiful metaphor for how our experience is created because these principles, principles of thought, mind, and consciousness that Sid Banks articulated, they're nothing. They're nothing. They have no, they have no 
sensory form. They have no, uh, they have no form. They're what give rise to our experience of form in the world of time, space, and matter. So that's my take on it, kind of in a nutshell, Alexi. And I'm gonna check with him later. Hi. This about that. I think there's something like a point to be made about concepts, like kind of like getting hung up with concepts and and like you said, like the principles we're talking about. So there are three principles: mind, thought, and consciousness. And it it's kind of easy to get uh, lost. In a way, it's about like the, the cool, the widely used metaphor is that. You know they are uh, uh, in a way that they can be seen as fingers pointing to somewhere, mm. and and uh, it's it's sometimes very easy to start looking at the finger and ex exper uh, analyzing and kind of like exploring and uh, you know the finger and yeah how it looks and everything on that instead of like, looking at where it's pointing to. And and that's sort of what what um, why we do this, why we do this webinars, why we do this um, conferences and this Jamie does workshops and where is to help people to see where where we are pointing to. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, I think you've hit the. I love the way you're saying this, Nico. So, all my words are just my best shot of pointing you to something that's beyond the word, that's already there, deep within your consciousness. And when I say deep within your consciousness, what I mean is at the place within you that's already creating your experience of this moment. And the words mind, thought, and consciousness, those are just metaphors for that power that's creating our experience moment to moment to moment to moment to moment to moment to moment. To moment. And we, all of, all of us who share this understanding, we're just doing our best to help the people who are listening to to kind of get a hit off that, to get impacted by it. And when, you know, you talked about your experience at the Oslo workshop, that's exactly what happened. You got a hit off this and you didn't do something to get a hit off it. It's what you stopped doing. You fell out of your habitual thinking and, and we all, have that capacity, we all fall out of our habitual thinking. And then we all get caught up in it again. That's that ebb and flow, that kind of now you see it, now you don't, now you see it, now you don't, now you see it again. That ebb and flow is as natural as the in-breath and the out-breath that we're taking our whole life. It's, you know, I, I someone was asking, I would, about how can you see it like this permanently. I never even heard of anyone who's who's in that feeling permanently. Everyone I ever heard of, including Sid Banks, would get tricked. He'd get caught up in his thinking and then he'd fall out of it. Now, what I found is the the deeper you see this, the less frequently you get tricked. Uh, for less time, you know, you recover more quickly. But there's no antidote. There's no uh, guarantee against getting tricked by your thinking because that's the power and beauty of the principle of thought is that it can create a perceptual reality that you experience as real. That's like if you go to the movies, if you go to the movies, a director's job is to, like I went and saw the new Mission Impossible movie the other night. Uh, so we went, no, it was the other morning actually. We went, we went to an early morning show of Mission Impossible 4 or 5 or whichever one it is. And it was a great movie, really got into it. 
Well, that was because the director did a great job of creating an illusion that seemed real. And my ability to lose myself in that illusion is what allowed me to enjoy it. And so it's the same with life. The ability to lose ourself in the illusion is what allows us to experience the beauty of life. And the ability to wake up from the illusion is what stops us calling the cops when we're in the cinema, you know? And our ability to wake up from the illusion, you know, is what stops us from punching someone on the nose every time we get mad or whatever it might that be to to wake up to where our experience is coming from so it looks to me nico like that that ebb and flow that now you see it now you don't that getting caught up in our thinking and then falling back into reality and that's how i see it now is we're 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 built for reality. We've evolved to thrive in reality. And when we're in reality, we do great. And then we get caught up in our thinking, which is another way of saying we go and visit La La Land. We, we visit a world where we believe our feelings are coming from somewhere other than thought in the moment. So when we're there, our heads fill up. And then at a certain point, we wake up from that. We fall back into reality. And the moment we do, we have what we need for the job at hand. So that's how it looks to me. Yeah. You wanna, uh, yeah, so, so Tonka is asking about, um, kind of like I'm, I'm gonna put it into my own words. Um, so so if, if my experience of the other person is, uh, okay, I, I'm gonna read it because it's easier that's my, so, hey, Jamie, I've been puzzled by this. If my experience about the other person in front of me is coming from my thought about them, where does that thought come from? Uh, it is in a way generated by the existence of the other person, or is, is it in a way generated by the existence of the other person? Because usually it seems that way, uh, but sometimes I feel like, I feel like uh, we create the whole world from our thoughts moment to moment. Well, as far as I can tell, Tonka, we, you're, we create the, our whole experience of the world through this power of thought taking form moment to moment. So I, I have the power, you know, the power of thought means I can get annoyed about something someone did five years ago, even though they're not doing it anymore. That's the power of thought. Well, that's got nothing to do with them. See, here's the thing, and this will sound strange, but your feelings, your feelings have a very specific job to do. Your feelings are there to let you know about th your moment-to-moment -moment thinking, about thought in the moment, the form thoughts taking moment-to-moment-to-moment. -to -moment -to -moment. So your feelings don't even know other people exist. They don't even know you have a past or a future or any of that stuff. Your feelings are experts on one thing. They're experts on the principle of thought taking form. Now, where does that thought come from? Well, we're connected up to this source of thought. You know, some of it's fresh and new, and some of it was fresh and new five years ago, and it's been sticking around ever since. And so either we're in, either we're drinking from the fire hose of fresh new thought, or we're drinking out of a stale glass of water that we thought yesterday or a week ago or a month ago or a year ago or a decade ago. It's either or, either we're, we're, we're feeling, we're always living in the feeling of thought in the moment. And our feeling is going to give us exquisite feedback on where our head's at. Where our, and and it sometimes looks like it's t like there's more to it than that, but there never is. We're always living in the feeling and the principle of thought taking form, moment to moment to moment. So, yeah, I think you nailed it at the end. Sometimes I feel like we create our experience of the world from 
from our from thought moment to moment now I'm not saying we create it from our thoughts I say we we're living in the experience of the principle of thought taking form like bursting into form like a fountain or a fire it's something that's happening real time moment to moment so it's not the stuff that's rattling around in your head you know what am I gonna wear tomorrow or whatever it's the thing that's creating your experience of this call right now moment to moment to moment it's a real-time function just like you know the I don't know what these screens do but I'm I'm sitting in front of a MacBook Pro so it's probably got a gazillion pixels well compared to the MacBook Pro the principle of thought is working much faster it's instantaneous to create a perceptual experience and then present it to you as a reality that's how powerful you are yes <laughs> this is so great um, are there any more questions coming up because I'm not sure what to ask Maybe well, one I, yeah go, go ahead well, one thing uh, that's just kind of popped into my head was when you mentioned, you mentioned like that we are not talking about the thoughts that are running through our mind, sort of what we are aware of. In a way, the ones that, um, you know, the self-talk. So what is that then? <laughs> that's thought too. There's a joke in a Kurt Vonnegut book. He says, uh, you know, you know, what that black stuff in the middle of bird shit is you know what that is he said that's bird shit too it's all thought it's all thought look around the room you're in or the the outdoor environment you're in wherever you are wherever you are a hundred everything you can see you're looking at thought being generated creating a perceptual experience moment to moment the same goes for everything you can see and hear and feel it's all being generated from within you i mean you have pointed it it looks like it's out there but even your finger if you hold up your hand in front of your face a hundred percent of your experience of your hand is generated from thought in the moment as well it's so odd it's so odd and counterintuitive no wonder no one ever really noticed it. I'm amazed that Sid Banks saw it. I'm like, wow, who would have guessed it? It's so unexpected. It's a trick of the mind. But, you know, we've been up against these tricks of the mind throughout history. You know, we, I'm looking out my uh, West London apartment. It looks like the sun's setting, but it's not. The earth's going around the sun. The earth's rising. The sun's not setting, the earth's rising. Well, it's not even rising because it we're floating in space, so there is no up or down. That's a trick of the mind as well. There's just in towards the center of the earth or out towards space. It's all an illusion. I mean a, a very practically, you know, it appears as though the sun is setting. But actually, the Earth is spinning around the sun. You know, it appears as though the moon is floating up in the sky, but actually it's all the principle of gravity holding it in place. There's, there's principles, there's natural laws that dictate how it works. And we, throughout history, we've been fooled by these tricks of the mind by these optical illusions and then we wake up to them we see through them and our understanding advances and that's what's happening now with this understanding our understanding of the mind is advancing you know if we spoke to someone a hundred years ago or two hundred years ago we would laugh because their how they think about the world would seem quaint and old-fashioned and antiquated well, it'll be the same for people a hundred years from now or 200 years from now if they were to talk to us they would laugh and go you guys are bozos you guys you guys you guys are so lost and we we understand so much more well well that's going to be because they'll they'll have progressed and so you know it always looks to us another trick of the mind is it always looks to us like 
evolution is over and we've figured it all out and we know it all now because we've got you know iPhones and iPads and stuff we think oh well we must know everything but you know forks and and uh, hoes and uh, I don't know spoons looked like modern technology to people 500 years ago they thought that was modern it's like it's just whatever you've got at the moment but we're still evolving we're still learning we're still seeing through misunderstandings and the biggest barrier to us seeing what we've got going for us is just our our innocent conditioning into a misunderstanding of how it works and we all have the power to see through that because we're all wired for peace and well-being and security and clarity we're wired for the wisdom you know we're built for it we all have it we all have it. One of the things I, I, I often am just noticing with my clients is how often wisdom is showing up for them and they just hadn't noticed that. It's always there. It's always there because we're built for reality. Yes. <laughs> so, um, before we wrap up, I want to ask you uh, a few things about the conference, Unlimited 2015. Yeah. Um, that you're going to be the, uh, the keynote speaker kicking it off on Saturday. Um, so just for those who don't know, 12th and 13th of September in Helsinki, Finland, uh, we'll have the, the first ever Unlimited conference. And you know, I'm going to write that a link here so you can look it up. And uh, I want to ask you, uh, what can people expect uh, well, from you at the, at the conference? Well, for me, so I'm really looking forward. I'm looking forward to meeting people. I'm looking forward to, to opening the conference. I'm really excited about that. It's my first time to Finland and first time to Helsinki. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I... I'm just, you know, I know that some of the people who are at the conference, you'll already have dipped your toe in the water, maybe had quite a lot of experience of this. I know for other people, it's going to be your first time at anything like this. And the first thing I want to say is, you know, it's, I really, you know, my hat goes off to you, Nico, in putting this together because it's really is, it's a, as I understand it, it's not only the first unlimited conference, it's the first conference in Finland. And that's a sign that the understanding of these principles are spreading. You know, there was a time when there was only one conference in the world that happened, and now this conference is happening, and it's amazing. So I'm, I take my hat off to you with what you're doing, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to you know, meeting uh, people who are new to this and people who have been exploring it a while to connect with my colleagues. You've got a great lineup uh, there. And so I, I'll tell you what you can expect. So I know, I know the first time I went to anything like this, you get there and you don't really know what to expect. And you'll meet a bunch of people who are already just having a really good time. They're in a really nice feeling for life. So that's one of the first things that's going to hit you when you come to it is that you may find even before the conference even starts there's just a really nice vibe that people are very friendly and welcoming and enjoying themselves and having a good time and in a nice feeling and expect and i don't know you know people will also be uh, not knowing exactly what to expect because part of this is part of the wonderful thing about these kind of events is there's something kind of magical that happens when you have a bunch of people in a room all looking in this direction and so you may very well find people having huge insights like life-changing insights I know the the weekend that you and I first met was like that Nico people were like going off like like fireworks just kind of seeing seeing things that were already true that's the thing you know it's so interesting i'll give you a trivial example i was doing a talk the other night and 
I put up a slide on the screen because I was talking to these guys about insight, and it was a bu business audience, and they didn't, they didn't, uh, they never really had, you know, much. They had, they're very data oriented and that sort of thing, so they didn't really think about, uh, uh, they didn't really think about anything like um, uh, insights or anything like that. So I, I put a slide up on the screen, which I'll share with you guys now. Here it is. Um, of the FedEx logo. So if you just click on that link I just put up. Um, and I said, now, can you see, who, hands up, this is a group of like 30 people. I said, hands up if you can see the white arrow in the FedEx logo. And like three people's hands went up right away. And then one by one, all the other hands started going, and people were going, oh, oh, oh. And so an insight is seeing something that's already there. It's already there. It's already been there all along. It's already been there every day of your whole life. And you just hadn't noticed it until now. And that's the beauty of this. Like, so I remember the, the first year I ran the Clarity Coach training program there, one of the participants, Donna, she's sitting there and on the second day, suddenly she's just like, oh my God. And I said, what happened? She's like, I think 30 years of limiting beliefs have just fallen away. Uh, and turned out she'd been terrified of public speaking. She came back into the room and she's talking to the group. Within a few weeks, she's talking to 70 people. She, she just released a video of her talking to 350 people at the Promax convention in Berlin unbelievable just by seeing what was already there what had been there her whole life but that she'd innocently been overlooking until now so that's that's something that's going to happen you're going to see that happening for people in the room i don't know if it's going to happen to you on the first morning or the first day or the second day or the day after or whatever but you're going to you're going to get touched by this you're going to see something you're going to hear something you're going to get impacted by something it's going to do something for you because that's one of the beauties of the lineup that you've got nico is you've got people from with very different ways very distinct experience and different ways of talking about this people from the business world people from the educational world people from the lifestyle world people so people from different angles. So uh, the thing I love about this lineup is that, you know, one way or another, you're get, people are gonna hear something that impacts them. And so the other thing that I love is when you come in on the second day, so by the end of the first day, a bunch of people have insights. Some people will be, you know, where, where you were after your first day of this, just very peaceful and clear headed and, and quiet. Some people will be a bit, you know, agitated or whatever. But then overnight, kind of magic happens. And so we come in the second day. And what you'll find is like it's almost like you're in a different group. And you'll look around and people's faces will look different. And people will be laughing more. They'll be having an even better time. And then the insights continue. And you know, you're gonna, you're gonna, it the interesting thing is. You're going to be learning. You're going to be discovering things, but maybe in a very different way to how you've seen, how you've have experienced learning in the past. You know, before I I got into this kind of world, my experiences of learning had been like school and, and boring courses and that sort of thing. And all of a sudden, you discover, oh, there's a way to learn that feels amazing and is fun and you enjoy and and that has you like one of the things that I found when I first started learning this is you start experiencing deeper connections than you ever thought possible deeper a deeper connection with other people a deeper connection with yourself a deeper connection with life is beautiful so I'm really looking forward to seeing you there and really looking forward to connecting with you there and uh, uh, and sharing whatever I can share with you yeah we really look forward to having it. I'm um, just, just going to talk a bit about the the, uh, the offer I put there. But before that, I just spotted that my sister is watching this. 
and it happens to be her birthday today. So, happy birthday, Terhi. Happy birthday. So there you go. Uh, I can't believe that I actually forgotten to. <laughs> I, I was going to send you a, a, a text message or something. Right? So don't worry. But there you go. Uh, the other thing is, so so um, what I've decided to do is that if you book your tickets to the conference by tomorrow night, Wednesday night, so I can if I see you that you book tickets today or tomorrow, uh, I'll offer you a free one hour coaching session with a certified clarity practitioner who happens to be me. So you get uh, one hour free coaching with me uh, if you want. You don't have to. You don't have to. But uh, you can send me when I, when I see you that um, you know you're gonna, you're gonna put your email there. So I'm gonna contact you and ask you, hey, do you want do you want to uh, use this offer? And then it's up to you to decide. But that's that's uh, out there. Uh, so in September in Helsinki. Good lineup. We got, we got some really cool. We got people coming from Norway, Sweden, Denmark, the UK, Germany. I think so far, and yeah. Is there anything you would like to say? Oh, the uh, the last thing I'd say, Nico, is I'm really delighted that everyone's joining us here. I'm really looking forward to meeting uh, meeting you in uh, Finland, and the fact that you've that you're even drawn to this conversation means this can work for you this can happen for you and i want you to know you have reason to be hopeful you have every reason to be hopeful because this is something that's already there for you so uh the search can be over you can you can you know you can uh you have reason to be hopeful, and you have a lot of beautiful experiences to look forward to, and forward to. So I look forward to sharing some of those with you. Yes, great. Um, so thank you, everyone, for joining us for this webinar. If you want to watch it again, it will be uploaded on our YouTube page uh, on Limited 2015, or you can use the same link and, and to see the recap. And I really hope to see many of you in Helsinki in September. Uh, if you're not planning to come there, we are also, uh, we have four more webinars coming up and we are continue, continuing, the next webinar is on Tuesday, next Tuesday, uh, is the 11th of August, uh, same time as this, and it's gonna be with Anders Haglund. And he's gonna talk about, he and I, we're gonna talk about same same stuff, but in the context of high performance, peak performance. He's under to say um, he's he's been a mentor for the uh, Swedish Olympic team and some football clubs in Sweden. So he works with athletes uh, as well as uh, business leaders. So I think that's going to be something really, really um, interesting. Also interesting talk. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jamie. And I hope you enjoyed this. Feel free to give us feedback. Thanks, Nico. It's a pleasure. Have a good night.